It gives me immense pleasure to be here in Kuwait for the second time in my life, though we are almost neighbors, Danny. But this is life. Um, what I will be speaking about is not something new. You hear this every single Ramadan, the deeds that we do in Ramadan. But before I go into that, it is quite beneficial to learn one of the branches of Iman. You know that the Prophet said that Iman is 60 plus in another narration, 70 plus branches. The highest is La ilaha illallah. And the lowest is removing obstacles or harmful things from people's way. And bashfulness or shyness is of Iman. So you will not be a full-fledged mu'min until you attain and achieve these branches. So it's not sufficient only to come and say, I prayed taraweeh, alhamdulillah, I'm a mu'min. No, there are so many branches. And among them is honoring the guest. Ah, Sheikh, because you are our guest, you want us to honor you. No, no, no. I've been already honored. Jazakumullah khair. I don't consider myself to be a guest. This is my home country. Kuwait, Saudi, we're all the same. Muslim world, we're all the same. We're brothers. These are only visionary dividers between us. But we're Muslims. Innamal mu'minun, ukhwa. We are brothers. But the Prophet said in the hadith that Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, and it's in Sahih al-Bukhari and elsewhere. Whoever believes in Allah in the day of judgment must honor his guest. As Muslims, we have a problem. We divide into three types. When someone when, uh, knocks on your door, some of us unfortunately looks from the, uh, 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 the door and then he turns off the light inside so that no one would know that there's anybody inside and he would tell everybody, hush, hush, don't speak. And he would not open the door. Why? Ya akhi, maybe he wants dinner. Maybe he wants to borrow money from me. Maybe he wants me to do him a favor. I don't have time. I don't want this. So this first category, he has no iman in his heart altogether. May Allah Azza protect us. The second type is someone who opens the door and admits the guest in and he leaves him. He doesn't offer him gahwa, coffee, tea. He doesn't offer him dinner. He doesn't smile in his face and show him that he is more welcome than he expected. So this person is midway, but he's on great danger as well. Because he did not do what Allah Azza wa Jal ordered him to do with his guest, to honor them. In Surah al dhariyat as you all know it by heart, inshallah, Allah Azza wa Jal praised Prophet Ibrahim. And this is a very strange thing, you know, Ibrahim was one, and he is a category of his own. He needs a workshop, not a lecture. May Allah peace and blessing be upon him. That's why we mention his name every salat with our Prophet ﷺ because he and our Prophet ﷺ and him as well were all both the Khalil of Ar-Rahman. A lot of the Muslims make the mistake saying Ibrahim Khalilullah, Muhammad Habibullah. No, the Prophet ﷺ is not Habibullah. Habibullah is a lower level. The Prophet of Allah is Khalilullah. Exactly as Ibrahim was and is and will always be the Khalil of Allah. So Allah praised Ibrahim and he made him a role model to us so that we would be among the third category of those who host their guests. When the angels came to him who were sent to destroy what people? Lut. They said, Salama. And he said, Salamun, qawmun munkarun. The Arabic word is فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ فَرَاغَ yeah, This means that 
immediately on the spot he went. The fa means it's not taking his time. It is on immediate effect. Faraga ila ahlihi. Then what did he do? Faja'a. And he brought this calf that was already cooked. They didn't have microwaves, by the way, at the time. So to cook a, a small cow, you need time. The scholars say that Ibrahim had that habit every single night. Meaning that after Maghrib, he would start a fire and would cook this calf. So he would light a big fire. Any one traveler traveling would see the light and come. And he would host him and he would feed him. And he brought this big fat juicy meat. It's after iftar. I know you're not hungry now. So, but this may prepare you for sahur. Now you know what to have for sahur. And he did not do what we usually do. When guests come to my home, which is very rare, you're more than welcome, inshallah. No promises, no meat, any olives and some eggs and, and cheese. This is what's available. Usually we tell people after putting the food, come. Bismillah, join. He did not do that. فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ He made it as close as it's possible where they're at. To their places where they were sitting. And he did not say, eat. He said, may you eat kindly? All of these are great lessons, but this is not the time. It shows you that the third category is the highest. Is the category that honors the guest. Not because he's a guest. Not so that people would not talk against me negatively. It is for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And by Allah, tonight is the second night of this honored guest in our presence. The blessed month of Ramadan. A guest that comes only once a year. But what's so special about this guest? Isn't he like everyone else? It's the month of fasting. We fast every month. Mondays, Thursdays, white days, uh, Arafah, Ashura, most of us do. What's so special? It's the month of night prayer. We never go to bed without praying at night and maybe some of us wake up in the last third of the night and make the hajjud. This is our honor and dignity. What is so special about Ramadan? I'll tell you. Ramadan is so special that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in it its most blessed and favored book? No. Allah revealed in Ramadan all the scriptures from Suhuf Ibrahim, from the Zabur of Dawood, from the Injil of Isa, from the Torah of Musa to the Quran. As in the Hadith of At-Tabarani that was narrated by Wathira, may Allah be pleased with him, and Al-Albani graded it as Hassan. All of these scriptures were revealed in Ramadan. And why would Allah Azza wa choose this, this month of all? Because it is a great month. And that is why Allah chose it and selected it. So Allah Azza wa Jal revealed his best books. And especially and specifically the Quran. By his best angel, Jibreel peace be upon him. And he revealed it to his best of creation, Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In the best of nights, Laylatul Qadr, which is better than a thousand months. In the best of months, the month of Ramadan. In the best of countries, cities, locations on earth, and that is Mecca, the sacred lands. So now you know why Ramadan is a favored month. And now you know why we should not take this month lightly like every single month that had passed on us. It should be given some degree of concern, of respect, of utilizing your time in it. The month of Ramadan is well known to be the month of doing good deeds. And it is the month of the Quran. So this is one good deed. It is the month of charity and forgiveness. It is the month 
of being kind to people. So Allah Azza wa Jal describes the month by saying, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. It is the month of Ramadan that Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed the Qur'an in a guidance for mankind and a clear proof for the guidance and the criterion. This Qur'an is a guidance. Do we have problems? Don't we all? We have problems in our houses, with our spouses, with our children, with our colleagues, in the market, in the street, everywhere we go. We have problems with countries, with Muslims among themselves. You have the solution, but it is the last thing that people resort to. This Quran, people unfortunately neglect. Though the solution is in it. How did the companions and the Salaf deal with the Quran during the month of Ramadan? They used to recite the Quran in a strange way, beyond our imagination. Some of it was not in accordance to the Sunnah. Nevertheless, they did it because of their extreme love to the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ ordered Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, to recite the Quran in seven days. Some narrations, it stated that you cannot comprehend it in less than three days. Shafi'i, the Imam, and also Abu Hanifa, the Imam, used to finish the Quran twice a day. Not recited once, twice, and yani 60 times during Ramadan. This is, I'm not going to say crazy, but this shows you why they are Imams and we are nobody. Who knows about us? If someone says, do you know Sheikh so-and-so? Never heard of him. Do you know Shafi'i? Yes. Even if you go to the jungles of Africa. Do you know Shafi'i? Yes. If you go to Siberia, do you know Imam Abu Hanifa? Al-Imam Al-A'zam, they say. We know him. Who, do who doesn't? Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, recited the Quran from Isha till Fajr in Witr Rak'ah only. And this was on days of Mina, of Hajj, near the Maqam in the Kaaba. Ya yeah, Sheikh, people are dying on Hajj. We can barely walk. And this man, the Imam, who's about 80 years of age, comes to the Maqam and says, Allahu Akbar, Witr. And he recites the Quran from cover to cover until just before Fajr. What kind of a man is he? That's Ya yeah, is. he's not a regular man. He's one of the best four in the whole of the Muslim Ummah. May Allah be pleased with him and may Allah Azza wa make us with him on the Day of Judgment. So the way that they dealt with the Quran was extraordinary. Imam Malik, Imam Qatada, all the big names you know, when Ramadan was due, they would eliminate and keep away the books of knowledge, no fiqh, no hadith. Only Quran. And they would not do what we usually do. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam, mashallah. How many times have you finished the Quran since uh, yesterday? I didn't. Mashallah, I finished it twice. I didn't ask you. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just telling you. Don't show off. This is between you and Allah. Imam Malik used to recite the Quran whenever someone came in, he puts his thobe on it. Why? so that nobody would know that he was reciting the Qur'an. On the contrary, when we sit in a waiting room and we're reading it from the mobile phone and someone comes, <laughs> Why raise your voice so that he knows that I'm not on WhatsApp and this is Qur'an? This is something between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. Az-Zuhri, one of the great tabi'een and one of the, narrat the narrators of the hadith in Bukhari, Muslim, and one of the trustworthy people, he says that in, when Ramadan comes, it is time for reciting the Qur'an and feeding the food. That's it. This is what, what Ramadan is for. Imam Al-Thawri, Sufyan, he, whatever Ramadan was due, he would leave everything other than the Qur'an. They would dedicate their time for the Qur'an. And this is a good question for you to, be, to ask yourself. Now it's almost like 27 hours since Ramadan was due, right? 27 hours in Ramadan. 
This is second night. How many juzu have you finished? No. <laughs> you don't have to answer, huh? Uh, this is between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. But ya khi, come think of it. How many messages, SMS, and كل عام وانتم بخير, Ramadan Mubarak, تقبل الله منا ومنكم, videos have you dispatched on WhatsApp? And I'm not, I don't have any shares in WhatsApp yet. So don't think I'm advertising for it. But how, يعني, seriously, how much time do we spend on our mobile phones compared to the Quran? The Muslims have not become weak, humiliated, and stepped upon, except when they left the Qur'an behind their backs. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مَهْجُورًا The Prophet is complaining to Allah Azza wa Jal that my people have abandoned the Qur'an. They're not reading it, and if they are, they're not benefiting out of it. And this is why Ibn al-Qayyim and other scholars say that abandoning the Qur'an is levels. So there are people who do not listen to it nor believe in it, though they claim they're Muslims. And you see them in the media, opposing Allah's laws, opposing da'wah, opposing Qur'an circles, anywhere. And if they recite a verse of the Qur'an, you laugh your head off. I was speaking once when, with one of them, in Saudi Arabia, I was going to the gym and he used to come to the gym. A guy in his mid 50s, young, young guy compared to my age, so young 50, I mean, mid 50s is okay. And he used to always debate with me about Islam why is this haram? Everything you Wahhabis say is haram, haram, haram. And says, Ya Akhi, you guys, I don't know, Allah says in the Quran, Innam al a'malu bin niyat. I said, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Hallelujah. What Quran are you speaking about? What, what is this? He said, this, this is an ayah in the Quran. He said, what surah? He said, I don't know. He said, is it an ayah or a hadith? And then the lights turned off. He said, huh? Uh, is it a hadith? I if you cannot differentiate between ayah and hadith, some of the expats, they come and speak to me about jihad, about overthrowing governments. And I said, do you know Quran? He said, no. Do you know Arabic? He said, no. And you want to speak about mega problems that you don't even have the basics to do? Every single salat. وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ These are the only two surahs you know by heart. قُلْ يَا الْكَافِرُونَ We don't recite it because we make a mistake. Once I started at Isha, I couldn't finish until Fajr. لا عبدوا ما تعبدون تعبدون وعبد لا عبد ما تعبدون I don't know when to stop. I'm waiting for someone to say Subhanallah so that I can take a right turn. Nobody is, is behind me. وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ What does it mean? I don't know. But I think that we have to overthrow the government and we have to kill everybody and then blow up a few balls. Subhanallah, tabarakallah. So it shows you how people are so far away from the Qur'an. This is one type of abandoning the Qur'an. Some of them may read it and believe in it, like the most, most of the Muslims, but they do not apply it. So many people I know, good practicing Muslims, so to speak. MashaAllah, they pray in the first row of the masjid, and they give charities, but they work in interest-based banks. They deal in riba, they work in the treasury department. I need a hundred million dinar uh, loan for uh, HSBC, How, what's the percentage you're giving for three days? I'm giving this and that. Ya <laughs> riba! Allah Azza wa curses those who deal in riba in the Quran, and you recite it, but you're not implementing it. Allah is telling us about those who do not come to Salat on time, being hypocrites. Ya I don't not I do not come to the uh, Salat on time, I pray in home. Even, even worse, the hypocrites come and pray in the masjid. You don't come? Yeah, there's a problem. The third type of abandoning the, uh, the Quran are those who believe in it, they listen to it, they apply it, but they make a big mistake by not contemplating on it, by not thinking of what Allah wants in it. So when they recite it, they recite it for ajr. They want reward. What did Allah say? What did Allah mean? Just go on. These people are good, but they need to move on a little bit closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Among the types of abandoning the Quran is for those who do not use it as a remedy and a means of healing to their spiritual 
illnesses and to their physical illnesses. When your child, if you go back home and you find the fever is high, what, will, what is the first thing to do? Uh, give uh, 10 millimeters of tempera and uh, maybe some uh, this or that and then go to the clinic and see the doctor and take medication and give a cold bath and afterwards maybe I may recite Fatiha, maybe not. If, if it doesn't work, I will recite Fatiha. Yeah, this is the wrong way of doing it. You should do, first of all, Ruqya. Because the healing is from Allah Azza wa Do you believe in this? Why don't you start with Ruqya? Why don't you start with Dua of the Prophet to your sick? So we forget that Quran is a means of healing for ourselves. So many calls I get, so many emails, Shaykh, I have jinn, I have envy, I have black magic, I have uh, black uh, uh, evil eye. Everybody, mashallah, in the Muslim world has, has one. So can you make dua? Can you make, yeah, you make dua for yourself. The Quran is there. It's your healing. But people do not want to. And there are types and types of uh, uh, other kinds of abandoning the Quran. May Allah save us from doing this. So in this month, let's begin tonight, inshallah. Try to finish with contemplation, with implementation, with belief as many times as you can of the Quran. And I give you this beautiful hadith, the glad tidings. Do you want Allah Azza wa to love you? Do you want the Prophet to love you? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يُحِبَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَلْيَقْرَأْ فِي الْمُصْحَفِ Whoever would love to love Allah and his messenger, he should read in the Quran, in the Mus'haf. What an easy recipe this is. Only for you to do is to read in the Quran with belief, not with criticizing it, with the intention of criticizing. Some of us read the Quran to criticize. Some of us pray behind the Imam. Ah, oh, he did not do Al-Madd Al-Muttasil. Mm, not good in Tajweed. Allah was not Raqiqa. He made Tafkhim in that. Ya Akhi, what, did, what surah did he recite? I don't know. But his Tajweed was. Uh, mm. this, is, this is a problem. You are leaving the core of the problem, which is why Allah revealed the Quran for you to contemplate, for you to listen, for you to implement. But you're not. You're looking at only the outer shape. Shahr Ramadan is the month of charity and being kind to people. The Prophet ﷺ was more generous than the wind. And this is يعني, a, a well-known fact. If we want to give examples, it will take us to Sahur. The Prophet was the generous person on earth. Never you would find anyone more generous than him. He would take his clothes off when he needed it. He would give, yeah, Akhi, I have three cars. Guru, mashallah, tabarakallah. Say mashallah. Huh? I have two drivers and, and, and a car for my own, but this is one of the disadvantages of having two houses. May Allah protect all Muslims. Nobody's saying I mean, subhanallah, subhanallah. Anyhow, once you taste it, then you will know it. So, yani, am I generous? The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, in after the Battle of Hunayn, he had a livestock, sheep, camels, etc., that was filling a valley, not filling a small barn, a whole valley. And there was this nomad, Arabi, nomad, no one. And the man's jaw was on the ground, you know, so shocked of this livestock. It's like talking about Fort Knox, you know, seeing all this gold. And the Prophet looked at him and smiled and said, do you like this? <laughs> the guy, without even thinking, said, yes, this is too much. Uh, you know, it, it's like seeing euros and, and, and dollars rolling in front of you. I can do this, I can do that, I can buy a plane, I can buy uh, a few cars, I can buy a few wives, uh, marry a few wives if you wish. Anyhow, with the money you can do whatever you want. So the Prophet, what did he say? It's yours. The Prophet of Allah, please reconsider. This is a lot. Give him two sheep and he would kiss your hand. Give him ten, he would kiss your feet. But give him the thousands? This is the Prophet, والسلام, He doesn't fear poverty like you and I. He knows that Allah is the provider. He gives without thinking. Because he received without asking. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa So this is the month of giving. Of being generous. 
This is the month where you prove that you believe that Allah is the provider. Who's the provi who gives you your, your, your pay uh, check at the end of the month? Uh, my HR manager, my finance manager. No, it's Allah Azza wa Jal. Who gave you the knowledge you have in your brains? I studied a lot, Sheikh. No. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'an. Allah Azza wa Jal got you out of your mother's womb knowing nothing. When you came from your mother's womb, how many languages did you speak? The language of crying and wanting milk. This is all. It is now who you are. Arrogant, boastful, thinking of yourself that you own the whole world. It is Allah who has given it to you. So the Prophet in Ramadan was most generous. Why? Because this coincided with reciting the Quran. Jibreel used to come and revise the Quran once every Ramadan with the Prophet ﷺ. Except in the last year, before he died, he revised it twice. So the Prophet during Ramadan would to give and give and give without any questioning. Because when you recite the Quran, this installs in you the belief of Allah Azza wa Jal and of the hereafter. So you give without asking. You know that Allah would give you, if not in this life, in the last uh, uh, day. And that is why the Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, as-sawmu junnah. Fasting is a shield, is a protection. And afterwards he said, was-sadaqatu tutfi'u al-khati'a kama yutfi'u al-ma'u al-nar. And charity, your sadaqa, extinguishes sin. Similarly to water extinguishing fire. Same hadith about charity and about fasting. And Allah Azza wa Jal promised those who spend in the cause of Allah. Allah says, Ya ibn Adam, anfiq. Oh, the son of Adam, spend, give in charity, and I shall spend on you. Do you believe this? Then let's see what this is going to translate to. Thirdly, in Ramadan, one of the most prominent du'a we know and we choose the last ten nights of it to repeat is Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni That's it. Ummuna Aisha, Mother Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Ask the Prophet alayhi salatu O Prophet of Allah, if I were to attain, if I were to see the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr. What should I ask? Oh Allah, pay off my debts. Oh Allah, increase my salary. Oh Allah, make me the CEO of the biggest company in the world. Oh Allah, Azza wa Jal, give me a, a, a new wife. Take the old one, I don't want her. Nothing. He said, Oh Aisha, say, Allahumma innaka afu. Oh Allah, you are afu. Tuhibbu al-afu. And you love pardoning. So, pardon me. Forgive me. Afu, meaning Allah is forgiving, Allah is pardoning, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is when you walk the talk. This is the month when you revise all your previous mistakes. This is the month where the people come to Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal set them free from hellfire. He gives them forgiveness without account. He pardons all their sins every single night of Ramadan. And if you want to reach that level of forgiveness, you have to do something in return. You have to also forgive others because in the famous story that I always repeat, Mastah ibn Uthatha, a companion, one of the first to migrate. Mastah ibn Uthatha. What is this man? I've never heard of his name before. Mastah? I don't know. Uthatha? Wallah, if I hear someone's name, I would laugh. No, this is the cousin of Abu Bakr. And he was among the first to migrate to Mecca. But he and two other great companions fell in a trap of shaitan. And they slandered Mother Aisha in Hadithat al-Ifq. Now, he was the cousin of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was a rich man. So... When he came to Medina, 
he started paying him weekly allowance because the man was from Ahlul Sufa. He had not a single penny. Nothing. He was sleeping and eating and living in the masjid. Nothing. Imagine when you are a great companion and you have nothing. This is too much. But this was the case. I'm, I'm bothering you with the... You sure? Okay. So when he slandered his cousin's daughter, not only that, the mother of the believers, the wife of the beloved Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr did the normal and basic thing that any one of us would have done. So he said, Wallahi, I'm not going to give you a single penny after today. Is this wrong? Yaqi, I would have killed him, personally. But it's against the law, no killing, don't blow him up, don't do anything. But this is the, the, the logic, what people have. Yet, Abu Bakr is not like us. He is from the elite. He is seeded number two in Jannah. He is the first from Ummah Muhammad to enter the Jannah. So, the Prophet came to him, alayhi salatu wasalam, smiling and said, Abu Bakr, didn't you hear what Allah revealed in the Quran about you and your friend? Allah says, وَلَا يَأْتَلِي أُولُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ What does this translate to? Allah is saying in the Quran about Abu Bakr and his cousin. Let, and let not those among you who are blessed with graces and wealth, let them not swear to give any sort of help to their kinsmen, al-masakeen, and those who left their homes for Allah's cause. Yani if you were given wealth from Allah, don't swear I'm not going to give these categories of people. Let them pardon and forgive. Why? Allah says, do you not love that Allah should forgive you? So it's give and take. Let them pardon and forgive. Abu Bakr, the man he is, wallahi on the spot. He said, by Allah, O Prophet of Allah, I want Allah to forgive me. I make you my witness that I will keep on spending on my cousin until the day I die. Subhanallah. This is the implementation of the Quran. Not, yes, it's a beautiful ayah. I'm not going to do it. Tonight, before, uh, today, before I came, my wife told me to speak to one of my friends. My friend is a close friend to me and his wife is a close friend to my wife. His daughter got married to her cousin and she had a girl. But subhanAllah, she got a virus in her spinal cord. She's young, she's like in her mid-twenties and she got crippled. And it's eating her slowly and slowly. Now the father of the boy is the cousin of the man. And the, the mother of the, uh, the boy is the cousin of the man. They're both cousins. The whole family are cousins. So after one year, he divorced her. And he got married again. Maybe it's normal, maybe it's his right, but it eats a person as a father. So he ordered his wife not to see he, uh, her sister, the mother of the boy, her sister. She says, you can call her, you can meet her anywhere else, but she doesn't come to your house and you don't go to her house. And they're all over the over 50s, huh? 50, 55, 57 years of age. So the, the, the mother calls my wife telling me to intercede. It's difficult to intercede in such scenarios. So just before I'm coming here to Taraweeh, I sent this story to him on WhatsApp. This is one of the blessings of WhatsApp. It's free. So I sent it to him and I said, my friend, wouldn't you like to be forgiven? Five minutes, he sent me, for the sake of Allah, I forgive. And I make you my witness that she will come to my house and my wife will go to her house for the sake of Allah. Five minutes. Ya akhi, this guy has no beard. He's not a mutawwa, eh? he's not short thob, but he loves Allah Azza wa Jal and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to my knowledge. 
He gives generously for the sake of Allah. Never we said, Akhi, we need a fridge and three air conditioning and a, a, a bedroom for a, 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 an impoverished uh, family. He's the first to say, it's on me. We need this to pay off the debt of someone. Says, it's on me. Subhanallah, the difference of implementation of what you recite from the Quran. Iblis, the, he magnifies other people's mistakes. Maybe the mistake was done out of good intention. Maybe the mistake was done without intending it. It's the handicraft of Satan to magnify it in your eyes. So whomever makes wrong to me, I will put him in my blacklist and I will wait for the moment to get back and to be even with him. And this is not the way of the Muslims in Ramadan. It is the month of forgiveness, of pardoning. You have a wife, you have children, you have colleagues, you have neighbors, you have a, a kinship. Some of us here may have not contacted their cousins in years. I know personally, brothers, wallah, brothers, siblings from the same father and mother, they are living in Jidda and they have not seen each other for more than 15 years. In Jidda, in the same city. And if one of their offspring, one of their children wanted to connect with his uncle, they would shun them and scold them and, and swear at them. Yani it is even transitive. They are making their children and the children of the children boycott their and sever their kinship. Subhanallah. Akhi, revenge is very easy. Everyone can, re can avenge himself. Everyone can do something to vent his anger. But pardoning and forgiveness, this is not given to anyone. It's not given except to those who are fortunate and to those who are patient as Allah Azza wa Jal has described them. How much time do I have? Five minutes? No, no, as long as we have Jum'ah tomorrow. Right. Now, these are all known to you. It's just a reminder. And the Quran itself is a reminder to those whom Allah Azza wa would open their, his, their hearts to remembering him. Now, Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. And he is deprived from Allah's mercy whom cannot be forgiven. The Prophet tells us, Jibreel came to me, peace be upon him. So Jibreel said to the Prophet O oh Muhammad, he is addressing the Prophet He said, O oh Muhammad, whoever attains and witnesses Ramadan and he is not forgiven, his sins are not forgiven, and he's admitted to hell, may Allah Azza wa Jal further him away from his mercy, from his forgiveness. Say Ameen. And the Prophet said, Ameen. Now, if Jibreel is making dua and the Prophet is making Ameen, do you think for a second that Allah will not respond? Allah will not answer? Wallahi, Allah will answer. So this is a big problem. It is a season for good deeds but it is a threat and intimidation. Ramadan is a, a big problem for us. If it finishes and Allah does not forgive our sins, we are doomed in hell. So what to do? We have to work harder and harder so that inshallah we did our level best and inshallah Allah will forgive our, our sins. So how can we do good deeds and attain Allah's forgiveness? The Prophet said to one of his companions, maharim takun nas. Stay away from sin and you will be the most righteous among all the people. Stay away from sin. Very simple, is it? Just stay away from sins. Allah did not tell you to pray from Isha till Fajr. He doesn't want this from you. Allah did not tell you to get all of your money all of your savings, all of your possessions for the sake of Allah. No, Allah did not ask you to do this. All what he told you to do is stay away from sins. 
Do we stay away from sins in Ramadan? Some of us do, alhamdulillah. Unfortunately, every single Ramadan is like the one before it. What had changed? How many Ramadans have we fasted? 20, 50, 70, depending on how old you are. What is the difference between all these Ramadans? Nothing. It's all the same. Every single Ramadan, we pray taraweeh, we go home. Nothing changes in, when, in our routine, akhi. We have a problem. After we finish this taraweeh and this lecture, we go home. What do we do? Ah, oh, Shaykh, we take some fruit and we, we retire and sleep. No. We take like three, four sets of remote controls. OSN, Orbit, uh, Rutanam, this is high, hot, hot bird or high bird or whatever they call it. And this is uh, star, uh, whatever. And we start flipping channel to channel, watching movies, watching series, uh, listening to some uh, video clips and, and songs and anything. Wasting four or five good hours of your life in Ramadan. And then he said, Ya Allah, Ya Ramadan was very beautiful. I wish, inshallah, every month of the year to be Ramadan. Liar. <laughs> Wallahi, you're a big liar. Maybe the four, first three, four days, Ramadan is beautiful. Second week, Allah, it's too difficult. Last week, when is it going to over? Huh? Tomorrow's Eid or day after? No, day after. Ya Allah. <laughs> Another day. And on the 30th of Ramadan, his booking is ready. Where are you going? Uh, Sheikh? I fasted 30 days for you. Now it's my time to have my Eid. Uh, he, he goes to you know where. I'm talking about my people. I don't know about your people. I know my people. This is what they do. And they do the whole nine yards. Everything that they stayed away from in Ramadan, they do three, four times fold. Ya akhi, this means that you were not fasting for Allah Azza wa This means that Allah did not accept your fasting, nor your prayer, nor your recitation of the Quran. So the best thing for you to do is to stay away from sin. My personal advice, turn off your TV. If you can, bring these black big bags of trash and put it on the TV and seal it off. Yeah, Sheikh, we will not be able to see Huda TV. No problem, don't see it. You don't have to see it, Ya Akhi. But because Allah Azza wa Jal, when mentioned in the Quran, there are the pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ Allah says, they ask you, O Muhammad, about intoxicants and gambling. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعٌ لِلنَّاسِ there is great sin in them and some benefits. You know, if I'm a dealer of uh, Scotch or Johnny Walker, I was coming in and reading uh, the magazines and mashallah's price list and, and, and so on. I, I can make money. So there is benefit for me. But the sin is, Allah say, وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِن نَفْعِهِمَا And the harm and the sin and the disadvantage is far greater than the pros and the advantages. That's why it's haram. So look at your TV set. What would you see? What's the majority? 90% to 10%? Haram to halal? Or even maybe 95% to 5%? So the 5% that you benefit from, stay away from it. Because all what you do is waste your time in what angers Allah Azza wa Jal. Internet, social media. A lot of the people are living, drinking and eating on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, selfie. What is this? I'm one of some of the brothers, mashallah, practicing. I'm near the Blackstone. I'm near uh, Zamzam water. I am going to the toilet. Sorry, I can't take my picture inside. <laughs> Are you Muslim? What is this? To that extent, you're so engaged in showing off, avoid these social media. Uh, uh, platforms because it takes you from one evil to the other. Twitter, all the lies you find in Twitter, all the abusive words you find in Twitter, avoid it. And also, avoid your mobile phones. These, that's not, this is not mine. Uh, this stupid, mashallah, it's a TV screen. 
This mobile phone, avoid it. How much time do you spend on WhatsApp? On ridiculous things. On fabricated hadiths. On information that has no basis in Islam. On the first Jum'ah, if you say the kalima so much, so many times, this would be equivalent to two hajj and five umrahs and three it'am of maskeen. MashaAllah. So where did you get, is this sahih, Shaykh? If I spend time just re answering the questions on WhatsApp, I would lose my time during the day and the night. So avoid this. This is not good for you. What to do? Recite the Quran. It's these. Okay, so we begin the lecture from the beginning. I think this, well, <laughs> the people are already dying to leave. Um, where was I? Yes, so leave your mobiles, Akhi. It's not, it's not beneficial. Spend your time on Quran. Yani after every fard, read two juz. Takes you like 30 minutes. This is multiplied by five. You finish the Quran every three days. Make it a habit. Before Salah and after Salah, read equivalent of two juzu. Rather than wasting your time doing this and that, I may differ. Sometimes I have to be on the mobile because I get questions of, Sheikh, if you don't answer me, I'm going to commit suicide in two hours. Seriously, I get, I get similar questions. I am a victim of rape. I am a victim of abuse. My father is doing this to my uh, sister. I try my level best to avoid it and answer only questions through my website, but sometimes you have to do this. But wallahi, it consumes time. And Ramadan is all about utilizing your time. So 10 minutes, I have nine minutes left to finish it up, inshallah. The best deed I personally think that would make a difference in your Ramadan this Ramadan from all the previous Ramadan, if you can achieve it and you will be a winner, inshallah, may Allah make me and you among the winners, is repentance. If we succeed in repenting this Ramadan, wallahi, and I swear without any expiation, wallahi, it will be the best Ramadan in your life. Just repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. And one will say, Hulaks, okay, I'm repenting. End of story. No. I give you the bad news. You cannot repent. You will not be able to repent unless Allah repents upon you first. You know the three who were left behind in the battle of Tabuk? When was Tabuk? Long time ago, Sheikh. Correct. MashaAllah. It was on the ninth year of Hijrah. And the Prophet, it was the only battle he told his companions, listen, I'm going to Tabuk. Every time he camouflages it. He says, I'm going, how is the weather up south? And he, he intends to go north. How is the tribe up west? And he wants to go east. Except Tabuk, because it was in summer, in August, and people did not have enough uh, money, so the, he wanted them to prepare themselves. He told them, I'm going to Tabuk and I'm going to fight the Byzantines who are like 100 uh, to 200,000 uh, uh, soldiers and we are only 3,000 of us. So it's something that is mega. In this battle, the Prophet went, السلام, and only the hypocrites stayed behind, except three good companions. Two of them attend, uh, attended Badr. So they were forgiven. One of them was the poet of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet had three poets. See, the Minister of Information has a great role in the government's policies, especially to the outside world. They didn't have any ministers of information. They had poetry. Whenever they wanted this tribe to fall, they say a poem and it falls. Whenever they praise someone with saying a poem, khalas, it made his day. So the Prophet had three poets. He had Hassan ibn Thabit, he had Abdullah ibn Rawaha, 
and he had Ka'ab ibn Malik, and he's the one we're talking about. Making a long story short, you know the story. And that the Prophet ﷺ told the companions not to speak to them three because they confessed. When he came back, why didn't you come? All the hypocrites came. Ah, oh, my! I had a flat tire. My my aunt was in hospital. Uh, I lost uh, cash. I, I didn't. I lost my GPS. I didn't know how to go. And so the Prophet accepted their excuses because they're hypocrites. Kaab ibn Malik and the other two came and said, "Oh, Prophet of Allah, if we were to lie, you would have accepted our excuse. But Allah Azza wa Jal would expose us and make us hypocrite. Wallahi, we had no, no excuse. We were just lazy. We had no excuse." So the Prophet said, Salam, okay, then go until Allah Azza wa Jal sends something on you. And he ordered the companions not to speak to them a single word. Imagine yourself going to the market, going to work, going to your home, and no one speaks to you. You say, Assalamu Alaikum. They look at you and like a zombie, they walk away. Not even replying the Salam. So after 50 days, Ka'b al Malik heard. Someone shouting from far away, Oh Ka'ab, this is the glad tiding of the best day in your life. And he realized that Allah Azza wa had revealed ayahs in his forgiveness. So Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, and the three whom were left behind till from them the earth, vast as it is, was straightened and their own selves were straightened to them they felt that it is so tight themselves and the whole vast earth was not big enough for any of them and they perceived that there is no fleeing from Allah and there is no refuge from him but with him after 50 days they realized this then Allah says then he accepted their repentance Allah accepted their repentance that they might repent unto him. So when I tell you repent, you cannot repent until he repents on you. And this is intimidating. This means that if Allah calls me to do something good and I fail to do this, this means that Allah doesn't love me. This means that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who made me lag behind. And I'm not doing enough. And this is what I always tell my brothers and sisters. Chapter 9. Revise this ayah. Verse 46. I'm not Zakir Naik. Huh? I just know this ayah. And the rest I do not know it. But this ayah is so powerful. The same battle we're talking about, the battle of Tabuk, in this verse 46, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجِ لَا عَدُّوا لَهُ عُدَّةِ وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُمْ بِعَاثَهُمْ فَثَبَّطَهُمْ وَقِيلَ قُعُدُوا مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, and if they, that is the hypocrites, had intended to march out with the Prophet in the battle of Tabuk, Certainly, they would have made some preparation for it. At least they would have got the camels, they put their goods on it. They did something. Allah says, but Allah was averse. Allah hated. Allah abhorred. Allah was averse to their being sent forth. So, he made them lag behind. And it was said to them, sit. You among those who sit at home. La ilaha illallah. Imagine 11 months before Ramadan. How many Fajr did I pray in the masjid? I asked this question to a brother in UK. I had a conference there and he uh, uh, received me from the airport. So it's a long drive to Birmingham, about three hours. So I was asking the brother, Jokingly, and he's a youngster, he's 25, mashallah, long, big beard, and he came to receive me from the airport, and he was wearing a thobe to the middle of his legs, you know, dark thobes and, 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 and turban, uh, you know, kufis, and I came with my jeans and t-shirts. When, when, when I, tra I came from Saudi, when I travel, I travel usually with the jeans and t-shirts. I'm thinking, mid-age mid crisis, thinking I'm still young. Anyhow. So I was with the guy speaking and I'm telling him, Akhi, mashallah, 
how many fajr do you miss a month? And the brother looked at me and said, excuse me, Sheikh, say how many fajr do I pray a month? I was shocked. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, yeah, Sheikh, I pray only one or two fajrs a month. And the rest, I sleep at one or two o'clock, working in da'wah, making banners, making leaflets. Subhanallah. You lose the capital of your investment for pennies of profit? What use is it? So this is a big problem. If you lose this capital, this means that it is Allah who made you lag behind. If you're unable to recite the Quran, don't say, Wallah, I don't know, I can't finish the Quran in Ramadan. When was the last time you finished Quran? He said, yeah, three years ago, I think. Uh, three, uh, Ramadan in 2011, yeah, I think. And I finished it, alhamdulillah. And since then, I don't know. Where is the Quran in your house? Pff, I don't know, I, I have to look for it. Maybe it's in somewhere here or there. This is Allah who is not loving you, who is not supporting you. And this is why you are so far away from Sunnah. You're so away from the Quran. Because if you made some preparation, Allah Azza wa Jal would open all the doors for you. Surah uh, 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 Al-Layl. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, and for him who gives in charity and keeps his duty to Allah and fears him and believes in Al-Husna, we will make smooth for him the path of ease. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى what? فَسَنُوَيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Allah Azza wa Jal will make things to uh, 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 good deeds easy for you. And on the contrary, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُوَيَسِّرُهُ The same verb, we will make it easy for him. Lil usra for evil deeds and for bad roads. So it is all in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not you. If you feel that Allah has supported you, you're in good hands. This is a blessing of Allah. Protect it, observe it, and preserve it. But if you feel that you are lagging behind and you're unable to do what Allah loves, Allah Azza wa Jal did not choose you. And this should make you afraid that you are lagging behind. Compare yourself today with how you were last year and how you were 10 years ago. In the early, in the, in the mid 80s, there was this sahwa we used to call. People were coming back to the deen vigorously, strongly, mashallah, reciting the Quran, long beards, smiling, everything is by the book, even when they play football. Pass the ball. Jazakallahu khayran. <laughs> Give it to me. Barakallahu feek. Goal. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Everything was Islamic, mashallah. Everything was in accordance to the book. As we grow old, people's beards are getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until the skin. And their thobes are getting longer and longer and longer. Instead of praying in the first row, nowadays they pray in the second, the third, the last, maybe the second jama'ah, maybe, uh, um, yeah, have guests in the home. Before, whenever there was news on the TV and there was music, turn the music off. Now, it's, it's okay. I just wanted to hear this rap song. I didn't want any, uh, to miss anything from being contemporary with the people and so on. We are losing ground, not to the enemy, physical enemy. We are losing ground to the spiritual enemy, to shaitan, to our whims and desires. So this is the time of the year where you sincerely ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive you, to repent on you, to get you closer back on track. And with the grace of Allah, if you manage this, this will be the greatest and best Ramadan in your lives and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. La ilaha illa Allah. You mentioned about the riba in Quran and in Quran it is mentioned that don't take riba, not forgiving. And now there are so many hadiths also, don't write, don't take, don't give, don't involve all these things. This is one question. Okay, let me, I, I forget. So let me uh, take your first question and address it. The brother is saying that in the Quran, it says that don't uh, take riba. 
So he's saying that we, can we understand from this that it's okay to give riba because I'm in need. So if I borrow from someone and give him riba, this is okay. But if he gives money as a loan in riba and takes interest on it, this is haram on him. It cannot be this way. It takes two to tango. Of course, over nasheed, Sheikh Afasi is doing nasheed and you tango with your spouse, it's okay. You cannot tango on yourself. So you need a giver and a taker. And the hadith of the Prophet, see, Allah Azza wa Jal did not reveal the Quran just like this and asking us to follow it. Allah revealed it on the best of his creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he explains it to us and we follow his understanding and teaching. And that is why this verse and the two other verses in the Quran that mentions riba, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell us that those who give riba, meaning the borrowers, and those who take riba, meaning the lenders, and those who witness the riba, meaning the, the witnesses, and those who register the riba, the clerks, they are all cursed by Allah Azza wa Jal and their sin is the same. So even if I'm in need for a mortgage, I am cursed like the bank who is giving me the mortgage himself. So this is question one. Question two. Second one is same related to this how the rich countries like Kuwait, Saudi and Abu Dhabi at government level they are taking loans, their own money, wealth uh, all in the banks and they compare how much we earn, how much we give. Mm -hmm. So they keep compare that. This is not the problem which we are facing nowadays that all the Islamic countries are involved in the rebirth. What the governments do, we fail to understand that you are not talking about companions of the Prophet So many times people say, Sheikh, in Saudi Arabia, they sell cigarettes. So, okay, good for you. Why is this Islamic country? Yeah, we, it is an Islamic country, but they're not companions. Yani they're not infallible. They are human beings. They have shortcomings like you and me. Yeah, don't go to countries. Let's go and talk to ourselves individually. Sheikh, do you have sins of your own? Definitely. Do you have sins of your own? Okay. If we as individuals have sins, what do you expect those who have power, armies, wealth, and everything? Yani, mashallah, you will find them in the masjid attending probably our lecture in the back, and then after we leave, they make Qiyam Layl until Fajr. They are, they are not companions. They have shortcomings, they have mistakes, and this is the power and the beauty of Islam. It doesn't tell us to follow individuals. Sheikh so-and-so did so-and-so, I'm gonna do the same. No, it tells us to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. And it tells us to use our Islamic spe spectacles. Huh? This is the Islamic glasses. You look at the individual and you filter him through your Islamic uh, 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 glasses. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him. He climbed once a tree and the companions fell on their back laughing. They couldn't hold themselves laughing their heads off. And the Prophet said, what's wrong? They said, the Prophet of Allah, look at his legs. It's like, you know, a piece of miswak. Huh? They're so thin, it's like a cue stick. You know, if you play billiards, so thin, it's so funny. Look at it. The Prophet said, by Allah, they are heavier at the side of Allah than Mount Uhud. And who killed the tyrant? in the battle of Badr. It was him who slay his head and brought it to the Prophet ﷺ. This young man. So we look at things from the Islamic perspective, not through idealistic ways and saying, oh, he, the government has this and that, the uh, leaders have this and that. Yeah, they do. So what? But as Muslims, there are pros and cons and Allah ordered us to evaluate ourselves first. Instead of sitting with my brother and oh, this guy, is, oh, I, don't, I don't like what he's doing. He, he doesn't come to the first. It's, it's like Abu Rashid or Abu Saleh. You know this, Abu Rashid, Abu Saleh? These two guys were sitting together, Abu Rashid and uh, Abu, Rash, Abu Rashid and Abu Saleh. Abu Saleh was speaking to Abu Rashid. And he said, Abu Rashid, you know the whole earth, the whole world is corrupt. Everything is in chaos and it's in kufr, in disbelief. Only the Muslims are the, cre the cream of the world. And Abu Rashid said, Wallah, you say the truth, Abu Saleh. 
And then Abu Rashid said, and Abu Salih says, but Abu Rashid, you know, even the Muslims, we have, you know, Indians, we have Indonesians, we have uh, people in America, and they're not practicing. Only the Arab world, mashallah, because they know Arabic, they're practicing. Uh, Abu, and she says, well, Abu Salih, you're saying the truth. Then Abu Rashid said, but also, mm, Arab world, look at Kuwait, look at Dubai, look at Cairo, it's all corruption. They have discotheques, they have uh, intoxicants, nothing is like Saudi Arabia. So he said, well, Abu Saleh, you're saying the truth. And then he said, uh, Abu Rashid, even Saudi Arabia. We have the Eastern province, you know, Dahran, Aramco, corruption. We have uh, Jeddah, where I come from, the beach and, you know, malls and they're westernized. Nothing like the central area of Saudi Arabia. And he said, well, Abu Saleh, you're saying the truth. They said, uh, but even the central area. Look at Riyadh. In Riyadh, you now malls are coming in the Mamlaka Tower and the Faisalia and all these people, Starbucks everywhere and, and, and uh, Costa Cafe and Astaghfirullah, they're westernized. There's nothing like Al Qasim, where the hardcore Islam is. He said, Well, Abu Saleh, you're saying the truth. He said, But even if you look at Qasim, we have Aneza and we have Breda. Aneza, they have dishes on their homes. They're being civilized, and some of them even smoke and they shave. Nothing is like Breda. Breda is the real core of Islam, practicing people, scholars of Islam. He said, Abu Saleh, you're right. I said, Abu Rashid, even Breda, I don't see people like they used to, you know, go to the masjid before the adhan. I, people are missing on Salat al-Fajr and their children are not being in tahfidh. The only place that remains is the street where you and I live. I said, well, you're saying the truth. But Abu Rashid, You've seen our neighbor so-and-so, our neighbor so-and-so, our neighbor so-and-so. They're not as they, their fathers and the forefathers used to practice. And I believe that in our street, only you and I are the only remaining good uh, 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 Muslims. And Abu Saleh said, Wallahi, yes, Abu Saleh, you're saying the truth. And five minutes later, Abu Rashid looked, uh, Abu Saleh looked at him and said, Abu Rashid, by the way, last yesterday I saw you pray and your prayer wasn't that good <laughs> you know you're putting your hand below your navel you're not raising you're not following the sunnah the moral of the story is Akhi, don't look at others the first thing you need to look at is yourself yani, seriously if we manage and succeed in avoiding our own shortcomings the way we treat our wives the way we treat our mother-in-law especially from the subcontinent with all due respect, they have a big issue with mother-in-law, daughter-in-law. So when I marry, my wife becomes a servant to my mother and my siblings. And when my daughter marries, she becomes, and we have clashes and let's solve this injustice. Let's solve the injustice we have in our offices. How much, I, how many times I lie per day. How many times I backbite with my brother every single one in the office and when he leaves i bite i backbite him even if i'm on my own we have so many shortcomings if we manage to fix this the whole government inshallah and the whole country and the whole world would become a better place to live and allah knows best yes sahih Okay, the brother is asking, we have a dilemma in utilizing the time. Should we recite as many verses of the Quran as possible per day in Ramadan? But then when we come to the issue of understanding and implementing and com contemplating on it, we need to read the tafsir. And not only that, in some cases, in, if you're not uh, uh, knowledgeable in Arabic, you need to read the translation. So this would consume a lot of time on the account of reading the Arabic text. So what is best? First, this is an issue of يعني, a fork of the road. Some scholars say Allah Azza wa told us 
And the Prophet told us والسلام, that reciting one harf is tenfold of good deeds. I do not say alif lam mim harf, alif harf, lam harf, mim harf. So this means that reciting the Arabic, reciting only, whether you understand it or not, this multiplies your good deeds as you go on. So just do it in Arabic. Don't read translations, don't read tafsir. If you want reward. Now, others say, no. Allah Azza wa Jal says that this is a book that we have revealed so that they would contemplate. So you would understand. So understanding is essential. So you may do that. And this is the core essence of the Quran to understand and implement. And this also has a strong backing of evidence. Now, to cut a long story short, compromise. Try to recite as much as possible and contemplate as any little time that allows you to so that you can have both ways scenario inshallah but I would always give the priority to reciting it in Arabic Allah knows best about this information Quran you said one Quran from Fajr what was it kind of Time was suspended or time was extended for him, though it was 24 hours, but for him, Allah in Baraka. Okay. No, time, time was not, uh, the brother is asking, Uthman, when you said that he recited the Quran in one rak'ah witr from Isha till Fajr, what was it? Was time expanded for him or was it a bar Baraka given uh, uh, in time? It was definitely Baraka. This is the Baraka given to them in time. Sometimes, I have shiuch, I have scholars. When I look at their timetable, yani I'm shocked. I don't know how they manage to do this. Yani like Sheikh bin Baz, for example, traveling most of the night until they set uh, uh, sort of uh, their camp at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. in a hotel or at the side of the road, and everyone goes to sleep and he spends that time until Fajr praying night prayer. This is not, and, and he's, you're talking about an 80 years plus old man who never took one day vacation of his work. So yeah, of course, he's traveling business travels. He goes to like Morocco and he goes to uh, London and Paris. He, he's blind and he never went to these places and he never spent time on what you, I used to call him in the 19, in the mid 80s before they had pagers, you know, even pages we did not have. You guys had pages years before we did. And they had only telex and phones. And even the phones were, you know, with, with the, the, the round thing. I used to call him every single day almost of the week, except Fridays, to ask him fatwas. And he had two numbers. So you had to redial like for half an hour until the line catches. And I used to... The, 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 his secretary would receive the phone call and he says, uh, wait a second, he's on the other line. So he would answer and I would listen. And after he answers and hangs up, by the time the secretary gives him the headset, he says, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah, Allah, La ilaha illallah. Naam. Wallahi, every time I call. The guy is not يعني, wasting time. He's utilizing time by dhikr. Between phone calls, what do we do, Akhi, when we walk from here to the masjid, from the house to the masjid? We give nasheed. We sing a song. We think in everything except then, subhanAllah. The Prophet, والسلام, in one sitting, he would say, subhanAllah, uh, uh, um, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, 70 times. In one narration, 100 times. And he's not speaking, he's just doing it. How many times do we say it? A month. Then we have a big problem. What was the question? I forgot. The of the time. Yes, so the baraka is in their lives and we lost this baraka. That's why when we pray taraweeh, we pray 11 rak'ah. Oh, inshallah, tabarakallah. Ya akhi, be ashamed. It's not two pages and a half. Two pages and a half. And ya akhi, the, imam, the first imam was too long, man. The second imam is, the uh, third imam was okay. Why? The speed, ya akhi. The last rak'ah, he read it in one rak'ah. 
He could have recited it in two rak'ahs. Qul huwa Allah, samad. Allahu Akbar. And the second rak'ah, he completed it. So we are all looking for a Ferrari Imam. <laughs> he is the best Imam. But if we have, you know, like uh, an Imam that recites one juzu, yeah, this is a big problem. Yeah, I can't, my knees, my back, I have uh, nausea, I have this and that, subhanAllah. But if it's a football match, you're willing to stay for three, four hours in a row. If it is uh, a new restaurant, opened uh, a, ch a chain of, of restaurants opened and you have to wait for a queue, I'll wait for two, three hours, no problem. If it's buying shares in this company or that company, and a new POI or IPO, or whatever they call it, say, hmm, okay, there's money in it. When it's taraweeh, Allah forgives your sins, all of the previous sins in Ramadan, if you pray for the sake of Allah, yeah, I, can, I think I can make a Umrah. It's cheaper and lesser and I can enjoy five-star hotels when I go to Mecca. And Allah will forgive my sins as if it is something granted. No. You have to seek the barakah with Allah Azza wa Jal. And the issue of barakah, I have another lecture, inshallah, in the coming uh, uh, years maybe, and uh, uh, we will give it to you. I think it's on YouTube. Barakah has many, many doors and ways to attain them, whether it is time bound, a place bound, whether it's through food, whether through means of worship, whether so many things. If you manage this, inshallah, you will get that and Allah knows best.